St. Joseph Cathedral, a historic edifice that traces its origin to the Jesuit missionaries in the first half of the 18th century, further enlarged by the Augustinian recollects to serve as the parish church for the town of Tagbilaran. In November of 1941, the old church of St. Joseph became the seat of the newly created Diocese of Tagbilaran, separating Bohol from the Archdiocese of Cebu to which it had been affiliated with for the past 300 years. The outbreak of the Second World War postponed this realization and it was only in 1946 that Monsignor Julio Rosales formally took office as Bishop of Tagbilaran. As the years flew by, the Diocese of Tagbilaran grew by leaps and bounds. In the 1950s, a separate chaplaincy was established here to serve its small but vibrant Chinese Catholic community. By the 1980s, the number of Christian communities all over the island diocese had grown to such an extent that it became necessary for church authorities to petition for a new diocese to be created to ably serve the faithful. In 1985, the Diocese of Talibon was canonically erected with the Most Reverend Vicente Noel as its first bishop. Meanwhile, the former Diocese of Tagbilaran may have been reduced in its jurisdiction, but the Lord's harvest had been great and many new curacies were created out of old parishes established since Spanish colonial times. Fifty years after its establishment, the Diocese of Tagbilaran joyfully marked its Golden Jubilee in 1991, a celebration many saw as an affirmation of the local church's coming of age. Twenty years later, the diocese, now under the leadership of its sixth bishop, Monsignor Leonardo M. Medroso, started meticulous planning for its upcoming Diamond Jubilee. Indeed, with its pastoral programs firmly set in place, and its people flourishing in the life of faith under the care of its pastors, the stage was truly set for the celebration of the Great Jubilee in 2016. Then the earthquake of October 15, 2013 struck, and for a moment we thought everything we have worked for had come to a destructive end. While the loss of lives had been minimal, considering the 7.2 magnitude tumbler that hit us, the quake's effect on the diocese's many beautiful heritage structures, the pride and symbolic icons of the enduring faith of our people, had been catastrophic. The beautiful churches of Loon and Maribohok totally succumbed to the ground. Lobok Church, Bohol's second oldest, largely became ruins. Dawis Church, with its magnificent ceilings, suffered a collapsed facade and sacristy area. Venerable Baklayon Church too, the crown jewel of our heritage churches and the oldest in the island, lost its arcaded facade and belfry. More horrible news came. The Begun Church, with its magnificent painted ceilings, was ravaged, together with the churches of Luai, Cortez, and even more recent churches of concrete, like the Church of Inabanga and Clarín. With much of our infrastructures down, our people also suffered from lack of food and water. Fortunately, kind hearts and lots of helping hands came to succor us in our hour of need. Relief teams coming from all over made us feel loved and truly cared for. Throughout those times of deprivation and uncertainty, our fellow Boholanos from areas less affected by the quake also helped in the relief efforts. The local Chinese community too also made their presence felt, distributing food packs and helping in the construction of temporary shelters and places of worship. It is ironic that the calamity that hit us last year happened at a time when our diocese was preparing to mark an important milestone in our Christian life. Looking back, we can only say God tested us to see if the diamond we hoped to achieve in 2016 had been reflected in the sturdiness of our faith, in His love, and in His providence. From the positive resolve our people express in the face of that natural calamity, we'd like to believe that through that moment of great testing that was a quake of October 15, 2013, 
God has weighed us and has not found us wanting. It pains me to say this. I came to this province full of enthusiasm and joyful expectation. I was heartened by the vibrant faith of its people. I was moved by the Boholano's loyalty to the church, and I was deeply impressed by the many heritage churches they have preserved down the centuries. When the earthquake struck, I was afraid I would be leaving a stricken diocese, its material heritage prostrate in ruins. But the task of rebuilding is still a long and tedious task ahead of us. We need to make our people put their trust once more in this land we call home. We need the will and the resources to rebuild our shattered houses. Above all, we need to reconstruct our churches not just because they are structures that have long been part of our heritage landscape. Above all, these churches have served as symbols of our enduring trust in God and icons of our religious identity. Through all this, we need a kind hearts and continued assistance from people elsewhere. For sure, we cannot do it alone, but with every bit of help you can send our way, the yoke of suffering and the burden of reconstruction we face each day would become light and easier to bear. One thing for certain, this calamity has strengthened our belief that God's love works through the instrumentalities of men and women of goodwill. My flock, be not afraid. God's hand is guiding us through all these trials. We shall rise up. We shall rebuild. And if there are good people out there willing to join us in this endeavor, we shall forever be grateful for your loving concern and generosity. By helping us, therefore, in this monumental task ahead of us, you are contributing to the rebirth of a culture, of a people, of a community of God. The earthquake may have shaken this land we love so much, but for as long as our faith in God remains unshaken, we shall have achieved the vision of our five-year pastoral program to be a beacon of light shining to the evangelized basic ecclesial community in a meaningful celebration of our 75-year journey of faith.